Hi, my name is Dr. Greg Olson. I'm here today to talk to you about sciatica and sciatic nerve pain. I've been in practice for over 17 years and in that time I've become an expert in treating sciatica and sciatic nerve pain. Now, I've seen thousands of patients, hundreds of which have had sciatic pain. Now, if you're listening to this today, you or someone you know is likely concerned um, that you have sciatica or sciatic nerve pain. Most likely you have pain, pain in your buttock, down your leg. Uh, where sciatica comes from, it's an irritation to the nerve roots that are in the fourth lumbar through first sacral areas in the spine. One of the things that we found to be most essential in this is first off identifying if it is really sciatica. Now the sciatica nerve uh, comes from those areas in the spine. They come together and they form uh, two different nerves. Uh, they come together, the common peroneal and, and the tibial. Now when those come together, they will provide uh, innervation into the buttock area, um, the muscles of the back of the leg or the hamstring, the muscles in the back of the leg and sensory, and in the, to the top of the foot and the bottom of the foot. What this means is if you have leg pain that's going down the back of your leg, if you have pain in your hamstring area, that does not qualify as sciatica nerve pain. In my experience, most of the time that is uh, something called myofascial pain and dysfunction, which can come from any of these gluteal muscles in the area. Uh, we'll come back to that in a little bit. Uh, with sciatic nerve pain, uh, sciatic nerve pain uh, comes from the spine. And we have a nice diagram here. So with the spine, the areas that we're talking about are the fourth lumbar, fifth, and first sacral, and second sacral nerve roots. What happens is, if you can see right here, the nerve roots come together and this forms a sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve then passes through this notch here. On this side, you can see the muscles here. So we have several areas where the sciatic nerve can get involved. One, a problem in the spine, degeneration, a disc bulge, uh, and following it down lower, we can have a problem through here. The sciatic nerve will pass either under or through or over this piriformis muscle. So if there's irritation through this area, that can also cause sciatica and sciatic nerve pain. So those are the key areas that we look at. With the sciatic nerve, it produces pain, again, in the buttock, calf, and the foot. Uh, you may experience numb feelings, weakness, um, tingling. Um, your, leg, your leg may actually get weak, uh, unable to support you. Uh, those are all indications that there may be sciatic and nerve pain. Again, pain in the back of the leg or the hamstring uh, is not, is not uh, sciatic nerve pain. Uh, that is uh, more typically uh, either a different nerve root or a myofascial pain and dysfunction. So part of what we do from a specialty standpoint in treating sciatica is uh, first off discovering if it truly is sciatica, and then secondly looking at what's happening in these areas where it may be involved. When we look at the spine, first we look at to see is there a problem with degeneration? Is there a disc bulge? Is there a disc herniation? Is the spine able to move? Are those discs able to work properly? When we move up from there, uh, as far as the spine moving properly, then we need to look up in this area. The spine has a great deal of control from a structure up here called the cerebellum. The cerebellum controls balance and coordination, also controls the intrinsic muscles in the spine. So when we have a problem with the cerebellum, that can cause the spine to lock up. Those discs are not able to move, causing irritation, inflammation uh, around those joints, a facet syndrome, uh, disc herniation, disc bulge. Uh, so one of the key concepts that we look at that differentiates us is this neurological component where we look at that cerebellum, cerebellum function, actually brain function, how that controls the spine and it relates to these areas. Then additional to that, focusing locally to see how the spine is working. Again, if it's a facet syndrome, if it's a disc bulge, uh, addressing those locally as well as uh, higher up and neurologically. As I mentioned before, it's not always sciatica. There are times when this pain is actually produced from what's called myofascial pain and dysfunction. Um, as you can see from this diagram here, this can produce pain that very commonly is mistaken for sciatica, and that'll go right down the back of the leg to the back of the calf. Uh, the sciatic nerve very simply doesn't provide any sensory innervation to the back of the thigh. So uh, th if that is, hap is happening, then we know it's not sciatic pain. Now, again, today if you're watching this, you're likely either suffering from uh, leg pain yourself or somebody you know. Uh, my purpose in practice is to help as many people as possible. So. Um, if I can be of service to you and help you or, or somebody that you're uh, watching this for, 
then please uh, give my office a call, 949-859-5192. We'd be happy to help you out. Or you can visit my website at AskDrOlson.com and find out more information and how we can help you. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.